Hi, and welcome to Danny After Dark. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a notification or a new episode. Tonight, I'm going to be featuring the case of Kai McGilvery. You may know him better as the hatchet wielding hitchhiker, or you may know him for his line, smash, smash, smash. But we will get to that in a moment. And hello, everybody. As you guys are trickling in, I'll just go ahead and say hi. Happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. So for those of you who are in the state celebrating, I hope you are having a fantastic long weekend. So let's see who's here. Hey, James Watson, Capone, Paul. Paul, you're slightly off, slightly off. But then again, that's you slightly off. So I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Beckham, Shelly, Kane, hello, Renee, hi, Russell, Mr. Jinx, uh, Chris James, Captain McDonald, hello, Liz, hello, let's see, Big Sky Scotty, hi, welcome, and for those of you who are watching but not in the chat, thank you so much for joining me for tonight's episode. This was quite an interesting one to study. Hey, Nick, my fellow Massachusetts guy, how you doing? <laughs> so just a little housekeeping before we get started. So my next true crime and chill, probably Friday night, but I'll let you guys know for sure. I'll be making a little bit of an announcement, so be stay tuned if you guys are following me on instagram you guys have may already seen some of couple of photos i posted me and liz went to salem and did a little bit of a danny after dark photo shoot so i posted a couple of the photos and kind of as the weeks go on i'll post some more because liz is fucking amazing at taking pictures and there were so many amazing ones to choose from so i was like i could either just put a lot out now, but no, just kind of spread them out. But it was, it was a lot of fun. And Liz is my girl. So anytime we get to hang out, it's just fun. <laughs> hey, Troy, good to see you. Hey, Tony Stewart. They are not in the room tonight. Tuga is the only one I'll allow in here if I'm actually doing like a proper Danny After Dark because he'll just, he won't jump up on the keyboard or anything like that. He's just pretty laid back and kind of your stereotypical fat cat, to be honest. But he was in here and he was on the futon, but then decided, shocking, he wanted to go eat. So he left the room. So, so that's that. Let's see. Uh, Danny. Would you do to the cats? What? I don't understand your question, Kane. Sorry. <laughs> no cats, not a chill. See, James knows the format. James knows the format. Yeah, Liz, it was so much fun. Let's see. Proper Danny after dark. What's that? I know. No kidding. Any James, anytime you're, you are in the chat, the show is anything but proper. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, hey, Wolf, let's see. I mentioned you on another Friends True Crime channel. They're going to check you out. Her name is Rinky. Cool. Thank you so much. Message me her channel and I will follow hers. Absolutely. I'm all for discovering true crime channels. Nice tan. Thanks. Yeah, with the Labor Day weekend, I went away and it was funny. If you Again, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see some of the stories that I posted. The, I was up in Maine and the lake we were at was called Crystal Lake. So I thought that was very, very Danny After Dark appropriate. But yeah. Hey, Doug Smith, you're going all in your Canadian, Canadian. What did I say something Canadian or did I like add an A at the end of it and not realize? <laughs> When I was away this weekend, one of the t-shirts that I wore up there um, was one that I got when I was in Canada, which just said like Canada, A, eh? And oh my God, my friends were like laughing at me nonstop in that shirt. <laughs> so yeah, it, which it's funny because when I was visiting Paul in, um, I just want to say Clay, but Fiddleford, it's just so funny time they would say it. I'm just like, oh my God. 
or like we'd be somewhere and someone would just say it. And it's, it's weird. But then again, I know here in New England, we say wicked a lot. Like, so I'm sure like if somebody from Canada came here, they'd be like, why do you guys say wicked in like every sentence? <laughs> oh, hi. Good to see you. It's been a while. I hope you're doing good. All of your words you're saying have extra us in them. Do they? Do they? I didn't know. I'll have to play this back and listen because I have no idea. Uh, let's see what else do I have to say. Um, working on quite a few case suggestions for notes that you guys have suggested for cases, which is really cool because I was working on, like, I was hardcore last night, like Danny after dark mode and I legit worked on like three back to back case. I'm like, Oh my God, I was flooding in case notes. But I did three cases worth of notes. I'm going to go back and polish them up. But one of them was a suggestion by eh, Paul cast. I know, I know. I didn't want to do it, but ugh. my God, when I do cover that case, I'd never heard of it before. I was like, what the hell is this? That's what like I really like about when you guys suggest cases because I have a list of ones I want to do, which I will. But the ones you guys suggest, I'm like, oh my god, like what is this? This is wild. And at least like Paul, I, you know, because he's three hours behind, I knew it wouldn't be too late to message him. And I was like, what the hell did you suggest? This is crazy. So yeah, that was funny. Calibrate your accent by saying ninja intruders. <laughs> Oh my God, I'll never live that down. That's so funny. Oh, good to hear that. I'm glad you're doing well, hon. Thank you for popping in. No kidding. We add used to words like, oh, that's funny. See now, like even if I tried to say right now, I don't think I could. But yeah. Hey, Danny, the second half of the Friday night show. You'll probably see Beckham on with me when I do my next uh, true crime and chill. As, you, as you've noticed, Beckham has been a little bit of a staple joining me, which is, I want to say wonderful, but that would be a lie. It really, really sucks. But, you know, help a brother out type of thing. So why not? <laughs> Just kidding. He gives a good balance. He gives a good balance. But if you guys prefer the show without him, let me know and I'll just boot him to the car. No problem at all. Danny, I'm going to bug if you till you watch the Blackbird and do a show on Liberty Hall. Oh, God. Ugh. I'm pretty sure that I have that on the list, but just in case I don't, I'm just going to quickly do a screenshot so I can. That's how I like keep track of them now. So, okay. Okay. Let's see. Hopefully Paul forwarded you the email link I recently sent him to you. No, he sure didn't, Doug. He sure didn't. When the show is over, make sure the cats know. Tony, I absolutely will. I absolutely will. All right, you guys, we're almost 10 minutes in. So let's go ahead and get started on this case. And I'm curious, kind of let me know as I'm reviewing it. Have you guys heard of this case or not? Or maybe it's the type of thing where as I start to describe it, like more and more will click and then you'll be like, I remember that case. So anyway, again, tonight we are looking at Hi McGilvery, the hatchet wielding hitchhiker. So again, as I said at the beginning of the show, if you know nothing about this, you don't know the name of him. You don't know what, you know, his nickname, the hatchet wielding hitchhiker you may know him from the internet. Smash, smash, smash. This is how you may know him. He became an internet sensation in 2013 when he described on a television show how he saved a woman by when she was being assaulted by a man. He quote, smashed, end quote, the man with the blunt side of a hatchet to get him off of her. So when he was later arrested and charged with murder, it came as a shock to so many, but why? How did this happen? Well, we're gonna go back a little bit and find out how that came to be. So Caleb, also known as Kai, Lawrence McGilvery was born on September 3rd, 1988 in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Kai, he had quite a bit of a troubled childhood. His parents divorced when he was four years old. He was allegedly sexually abused in foster care. He killed hamsters 
and tried to burn his home down. Shirley Stromberg, his mother, claimed that Kai struggled with behavioral issues his whole life and was hospitalized for some time. Kai would later claim that he was locked in a cage by his mother. She insisted he was locked in his room for his own safety. She said, quote, I had to, for a short period of time, have the ability to stop him from getting out of his room too early because he was a free spirit and would get up earlier than me and get into stuff that would harm him, end quote. She would also say, quote, being a responsible parent, I needed to not allow that to happen. It was for a short period of time, and it was in his best interest and for the safety of the little guy, end quote. All right. All right. I know you guys are thinking, what? Because when I was doing the research, I was like, wait a minute, locked in a cage by his mother. And when, when you first hear her say it was for his own safety, not that that justifies it whatsoever, but you're wondering, what does that mean? But then from the quotes that I was getting from her, as she was saying, you know, to stop him from getting out too early, he was a free spirit, he could get into stuff that would harm him. So the things that would harm him, why don't you limit access to that as opposed to locking him in his room? Think about it. Kids get up earlier than their parents all the time and go through the house. They don't need to be locked in their room or locked in a cage. So I was baffled by that. And right when I read that, I was like, all right, this is going to be an extremely traumatic childhood. And it might be the basis as to explain so many things that we're going to learn as the episode goes on. But before I do that, I just want to catch up with you guys to see where you are in the chat. Uh, let's see, I need to look up Blackbird. Must be good if you're promoting it. Kai is a Canadian legend. Doug, that's what I, when I messaged Paul and I said, look who I'm covering tonight. Yeah. Yep. Anti-hero. Just sent it. You know, Paul, you're, you're nothing but on top of things when it comes to, you know, sharing what people, hey, send this to Danny. Okay. A month later. Wait, what? <laughs> I try not to pick up hitchhikers who have a hatchet. James, that's just a good practice to have. Hey, Corey, good to see you, hun. It's okay. It was with the blunt side. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for posting that. Mimi, limit the abuse first. Yeah. Let's see, just make sure. I mean, sometimes I'd like to lock mine up, but I have appropriate restraint. That's why I'm friends with you, because if you did not have that restraint, I don't think I could. Yeah, I'm hanging out with my friend. You know, she's just going to lock up her kid while we go out and, you know, have some drinks. But <laughs> yeah, no, no. Oh, my God, Renee, Renee. I know, I know. All right, so. Now that we've established that, and if you think about it, when we talked about so far, divorced parents, sexually abused as a child, killed animals, his hamsters, and tried to burn down his home. There's so many common traits, I should say, that we see from people who do go on to commit murder, and he's just checking the box off left and right. Again, not that all of those things mean it's going, you know, it's a definite going to happen, but just kind of as we go through the case, it's one of those, the more and more we see in here, it's a little, it, it just makes everything fall into place a bit more. So, all right. Kai stated that as a child, he had quote, no support and nobody around to help me out in quote in Canada. And that there was quote, a lot of bad stuff that happened end quote. He wanted to get out from his home, but that people, quote, kept taking her side, end quote. By that, we're presuming he means his mother. All of his scars are healed, but there are still scars, is what he was going to say. Quote, I don't want to go back to being a certain way. This inner child that I've guarded my whole life is still right there. I love this inner child very much. I respect this inner child. I value this inner child 
and I am the dad that I always wanted, end quote. And another quote by Kai, quote, I talk to this inner child and say, it's not your fault. It wasn't you that is responsible for them getting divorced. It was not you that was responsible for all that molestation. It wasn't you that was responsible for all that. You just had to take the fall. And now that I'm older, I can say that, end quote. So those quotes that I just went through, some of them, you can kind of see the first few where you can get the message he's saying, but the way he's saying is a bit all over the place and doesn't make a lot of sense. But the last quote was so heartbreaking, but it's also so easy to understand. And it really explains the mind of a child when they're going through divorce of a parent. You know, children, put they blame themselves. It's just a matter of fact. They don't have the wherewithal yet to kind of think externally in regards to other people and other things. It's very I centered, which is not a bad thing. That's just part of children growing up. So you can see how he's having to tell himself, it's not my fault that they got divorced. You know, really trying to tell himself that and trying to believe that. But then also trying to convince himself he was not responsible for any sexual abuse that he had occurred as a child. And it's heartbreaking that he has to remind himself that and tell himself that as a child. But it made, that quote made a lot of sense and was also, like I said, extremely, extremely heartbreaking. So, oh my God, Linda Rodset. There wouldn't be a Danny After Dark show if you guys aren't talking about Linda Rodset. <laughs> All right. So Kai would go on, however, to leave, to leave, well, to leave where he was, yes, and to live a transient life. This means he was traveling from location to location, no form of identification or form of income to support himself. February 2013. That is where we come to know Kai. A man was driving on a rampage and purposely hit a pedestrian. And then he started to attack the woman. Kai was nearby, saw what was happening, came over to help, and he bashed the man's head in with a hatchet that he had been carrying in his backpack. Kai was interviewed on the scene by KMPH News, the way he described the events. It was pretty erotic. You can go back on YouTube and find this KMPH interview. But the gist of what he said was, quote, no matter what you've done, you deserve respect. It doesn't matter your looks, your age, anything, you're worthwhile, end quote. End quote. <laughs> he also gave the infamous line that we know him for, smash, smash, smash. And he became a sensation overnight. The reporter had uploaded. It was a six minute interview to YouTube that night. It had 50, uh, no, not 50, sorry, 500,000 views by the morning. He became an internet sensation basically overnight. He was even hailed as a hero in the days after the attack. So I kind of take a step back from this and think, Wow, this man who didn't have any ties to what was going on came over and literally saved a woman's life. However, if you do go and watch the YouTube video of this interview, which I encourage you all to do, he's very erratic, very all over the place. You can just kind of tell something isn't quite right mentally. So it's it, it had a bit of a sad ambience to it. So I'm thinking, okay, yes, this man did this wonderful thing. But clearly he has his own struggles that he's going through. He just happened to do good in the right moment. And then, and I wonder at the time if this got lost in translation is why he had a hatchet in his backpack. And I understand that he's essentially drifting, no form of income, you know, needing to survive on his own. And I understand would need some form of protection. I get that. But I was just like, like a knife I would have understood, but I'm like, hatchet, that's pretty, I don't know. That is really cut to do some damage as it, as it did. So that's what kind of stuck out to me. I see how everyone saw it and instantly was, oh, there's this hero. And I'm thinking, yes, he did this wonderful thing, but there's more to him and we need, that needs to be looked at, but it just seemed to just 
again, he made a great internet meme. So people aren't really thinking past that. How old was he when this happened? So you're going to really make me do some math, aren't you? So this happened in 2013 and he was born in 88. So that would mean he would be about 25 years old. So about 25 when this incident occurred. Okay. Hello, Paul. Good to see you. Welcome. Yes, Renee. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, as kind of things are being said, it, it would make sense. It's like, I remember him. Looks like a damn hippie. <laughs> All right. Okay. I mean, okay. Cutting wood for, you know, if he is living outside, that that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So the interview that Kai did that evening in that day when he saved that woman, that was not his only interaction with the media. Later that month, Kai would do another interview and speak with KMPH, where he explained his difficult childhood and his experiences of being sexually abused. Well, now, since he did that second interview, he was extremely sought after. He was wanted everywhere. He went on to appear on the talk show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, and he reluctantly signed a contract with the producers of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Reality TV brand manager Lisa Samsky, who worked with the Kardashians, said, quote, the appeal with Kai was that most people who are heroes aren't homeless people. He was someone who came from a different walk of life and could expose people to a life they've never seen. He seemed cute, sweet, and innocent, and had that it factor, end quote. Pause. I hear what she's saying, but when I also hear that, I think extreme exploitation, extreme exploitation. I guarantee that Kai, in his mindset, had no idea the logistics beside, besides signing that contract. It just, if you really think this man did so much good and he's and he's been dubbed a hero. Do something for him. This whole let's exploit him and you know people will see a different walk of life. No, no. There's you have a different angle from this. It's extremely extremely obvious you're trying to exploit him and I don't know. It just blows my mind. It blows my mind. And there is I believe a Netflix documentary covering Kai McGilvery. I'm not a Netflix person. You guys know my position on that. I have heard a lot of different reviews on that, and they do go quite a bit into this from what I've what I've read. So if you want to kind of know more about that, check it out. But yeah, I was just very discouraged that I understand people want to talk to him, but to throw reality TV at him and we're going to make him a star and he has that it factor he has a lot of trauma that he's opened up about a difficult childhood and sexual abuse comes with a lot of trauma and here you are let's give him a reality show i don't know i could go on and on about that but it was just very discouraging to read that but also not surprising because that's the type of world that we live in so all right, let's just double check to see where you are. Okay, you guys are talking about the Manson case. <laughs> All right, that's totally fine. <laughs> you know, if I wasn't doing Danny After Dark right now, I'd be talking Manson with you. <laughs> so now March, uh, no, sorry, not March, May 12, 2013, Kai met 73-year-old Joseph Gaffey Jr. in Times Square, New York. They had had a beer together, and then he was invited to stay in Joseph's guest room. May 13th. 2013. Joseph was found in his home in Clark, New Jersey. He was dead from blunt force trauma. He had a stent in his chest, suffered blunt force injuries to his face, head, neck, chest, and arms, including three skull fractures, four broken ribs, and severe contusions, abrasions, and bleeding, prosecutors would go on to say at the time. That was a violent and vicious attack. Police had found a piece of paper tucked under a laptop with Kai McGilvery's name and a number on it, along with a train ticket receipt. They looked at CCTV footage of Joseph purchasing a train ticket for Kai at the station before hugging him goodbye. 
May 16, 2013. So three days later, Kai was arrested in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in connection with the murder. April, 2019, Kai went to trial for the murder of Joseph Galfi Jr. He pleaded not guilty and claimed he had acted in self-defense. He stated he had been allegedly drugged and woke up to found Joseph was sexually assaulting him. Kai's defense attorney, John Cito, claimed the police had failed to gather evidence that would have proven that an actual sexual assault had occurred. April 2019, Kai was found guilty of first-degree murder. May 2019, Kai was sentenced to 57 years in prison. Superior Court Judge Robert Kirsch told Kai during sentencing, quote, you are crafty, you are cunning, you are disingenuous, and you are manipulative. When you become eligible for parole, you will still be younger than Mr. Galfi was when you murdered him, end quote. The judge would add, quote, you created this public image of a free spirit, but underneath that free spirit, the jury saw another side of you, a cold-blooded, calculated, callous killer, end quote. January 2020, Kai spoke with Inside Edition. He maintained that he had acted in self-defense. He stated, quote, I punched him in the face and he was on top of me and, I, and he shoved me onto the bed. I wanted to get away from him, but I couldn't get him away from me, end quote. When asked why he didn't call the police after the incident occurred, if it was an actual self-defense, Kai just said, quote, he just had to get out of there, end quote. And then he also went on to say, quote, I've never murdered anyone, end quote. August 2021, Kai tried, but was unsuccessful in trying to overturn his conviction. Kai McGilvery is scheduled to be released from prison in October of 2061. That is the case of Kai McGilvery. So do you guys have any questions or comments on this case? What do you guys think about this? Chris James, was the Netflix show on this any good? I have not seen it personally. I try to kind of stay away from Netflix stuff when it comes to true crime. But I did hear, I have heard some mixed reviews on it. I hear it did go quite a bit into the aftermath of when he saved that woman and the interviews that he did and how he was so sought after and a lot about the producers wanting him for kind of like a keeping the producers of keeping up with the Kardashians, them wanting him on. And they really went into that from what I've heard. So I can't personally recommend it or not recommend it, but I, I've heard, again, I've heard mixed reviews on it. So are you going to talk about the Jimmy Kimmel appearance? I'm just only mentioning that he was on. Again, anything more specific than that, like you guys could certainly look it up on YouTube and see the actual appearance. Anything that I did research-wise when looking up Kai, it was just, it was very, it had such a sad undertone. And I'm not taking away from the crimes that he did because it was absolutely horrific in the murder that was that occurred but this was just crystal clear somebody who was really really struggling with mental illness and where is the help it just seems that especially once he get all this publicity and notoriety he's known now let like someone do something and it just to me, he, he was just extremely exploited, extremely exploited. So it was very, everything was pretty heartbreaking. Any of the clips that I saw, it, it just screamed someone suffering, someone really, really suffering. And it's unfortunate because in the world that we live in now, you know, I could see why he would make a great internet cessation and a great meme and, you know, Let's post this and that, but it, it, uh, I don't remember. I honestly, when I was doing the research, it's like, I vaguely remember this happening, but not, I, I'm not in Canada, I'm in the States. So I think it'd make a little bit more sense why I'm like, mm, I don't quite remember that where any of the, you know, Canadian, you know, friends that I've made through YouTube are like, yes, Kai McGilvery, you guys knew right away, right away. But 
So I didn't remember a lot of this. I just kind of vaguely knew about it, but yeah, I, I see how he was an internet sensation, but I also see somebody who was very much hurting and suffering and needed help. And that help, I don't see where it was being offered. I just see exploitation. I'm surprised I didn't mess up that word more than once, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> so let's just, I don't want to miss any of you guys' comments on this. Okay. Oh my God. We're still on Linda Rothstein. <laughs> you guys are too much. Okay. Uh, Danny, I got to make a kind of disclaimer here. Kai is from Edmonton in Alberta, which is completely different than British Columbia for the rest of Canada, aside from Quebec. Thank you. Because to me, that doesn't mean a lot not being from Canada. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, hon. I just, I'm not familiar with you know what what the differences are so if there is quite a bit please please feel free to let that be known i knew a guy when i was in rehab who murdered a man and he used the same defense that he was sexually assaulted mm. uh, people should watch the original amazing mockumentary uh, fubar to get an idea of what normal quote unquote normal alberta is like Thank you, Doug, for sharing that. Thank you. Oh my God, Capone, stop. Hi, Tony, welcome. You just missed the case, but that's fine. You can go back and catch it if you would like. But as you know, since it's a regular show episode, there will be no cats in the background. So if you choose not to watch it and to wait till True Crime and Chill later this week, for that reason, I completely understand. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So again, if there's any other, especially Doug, you are great with knowledge of this area, especially had well, well versed in Kai before I discuss this. So if there's any other little pieces that you think would be helpful for the audience, as well as myself to know, please feel free to let that be known. And I'm just going to take a quick sip of my water. And yeah, we'll continue to chat about this for a little bit. Okay. Thank you, hon. So that, uh, where was it? I wanted to make the note. The one of the things that I did hear from the Netflix documentary was at the very end, in please don't quote me, it was Kai kind of feeling like he didn't, you know, he had all this fame, if you want to call it fame, 15 minutes of fame, I mean, to be perfectly honest, and didn't get much out of the end of it. And I think expected and made it known that he expected to be compensated for his interview in his time with Netflix, which kind of was from when I was reading that was very not surprising. Again, we're dealing with somebody who has very clear mental illness, but also and the Canadian laws might be very different here in regards to in the U U.S. We have the son of same law, so nobody can profit directly from their the crimes that they did. And I mean, I'm just giving a very brief overview of the son of same law. Obviously, there's it's way more detailed and more intuitive. If that's something you guys want to look into. I don't know if Canada has that, but it kind of again wasn't fully shocking because of the mental illness piece. But thinking, wait, what? he wants to be compensated. What? Like, look at what you're in jail for. It was. Yeah. So if you guys do watch the documentary or if anybody is watching this after the fact, after this video has um, stayed up on my channel and you have watched the Netflix documentary and you want to comment on your thoughts in the comments here on the video, please feel free to do so. Please feel free. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Let's see. 
Wolf says, what I found crazy about Kai and his celebrity turned out to be a total fail. It could have brought him movie roles and who knows what, but his underlying mental health issue led to a disaster. Extremely well said. Extremely well said. But then it also, another thing that just kind of made me think of that, Wolf, based on what you said is, he was somebody that no one knew anything about. And yes, he did this amazing act. He saved this woman's life. But people put him on a pedestal so quickly and nobody knew who they were putting on a pedestal and, you know, who were dubbing a hero again, not taking away that he saved a woman's life. But if you're going to call somebody a hero and put them on a pedestal and all of that, think, think about what you're doing. You don't know his backstory. And especially in the interview, again, that six minute interview, it's on YouTube. He's clearly somebody who has mental illness. He, it's, it's so abundantly clear. So how people didn't think, wow, he did this great thing, but here's someone who's, you know, clearly struggling. Let's, let's rally. Let's see what we can do. Does he, you know, need help getting employment, you know, things like that, something to get him up and on his feet. What can we do? That was just completely overlooked to, we want more, we want more. Maybe he'd go on reality TV. It just, there was a big disconnect and a big jump. So was it, and then everybody was shocked, like shocked that this man who people knew nothing about created, did this crime and created this chaos and ended this man's life. I don't know, man. Doug says the original food bar. So amazing. I spent six weeks with Paul Spence and it's hilarious. Cool. That is very cool. Um, James, I know that's a whole, that's a whole, I, so I'm not into comic books. Shocking. But I liked Ezra Miller in the role that he did. But ever since everything came out, I refused to see the latest. Oh, my God. I'm totally blanking the name of the movie. Oh, my God. Like the specific name of the movie, the one that just came out. Refused to see it. Refused to see it. And I feel bad because there are so many amazing actors and actresses in, in the movie that he's in. And I hate to not support them, but he's someone, too. How are we? Hollywood, what are you doing? What are you doing? pull out from this. Like this man clearly needs help and has done some horrific things and you're still going to push forward his movie. It, The Flash, The Flash. I'm blanking what the specific name of that movie that was though, the one that just came out, totally blanking it. But yeah, and look at that. Let's just re reward very bad behavior. Very bad behavior. Yes, he needs help, but bad behavior at the same time. Yep. Another. Yeah. Oh, Liz is still here. Let's see. I have to look that up. I've been adding so many books by former Boston mobsters to my read list. Obviously you have. I never even considered what money they make off those or if they don't. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, let's see. Doug says, watch FUBAR. You'll have a much better idea of Kai's upbringing and surroundings. Yes. He was kind of born to fail. Yeah. That is extremely accurate. His upbringing and illnesses just piled on and virtually eliminated any chance of normalcy. I can't get over that he was locked in a cage, locked in a room and locked in a cage. And his mother said it was the best thing for him. I heartbreaking, heartbreaking out of every abused, you know, true crime a case I've looked at and you know parents have tried some the parents have tried some very unique ways to try to control their children I have not and I'm, I'm sure he's not the only one but I haven't come across one where he was locked where another child was locked in a cage this was kind of the first one that I read and was like oh wow this is how we're going to try to control him okay and you're saying it's for his own good okay wild wild 
the flash thank you i knew i was behind and i i just don't remember the specific name of the flash movie that he was the, the most recent one had a severe reaction yet oh absolutely absolutely i don't think anybody suspected that he'll be violent without provocation um oh jesus christ hollywood yeah very well said doug absolutely we could talk for days and not mention a single name more than once and discuss the ugliness of Hollywood for days. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Absolutely. Locked in a cage, box boy, in the MF orbit. <laughs> James, that's why you're ha you have such an aversion to the wooden spoon. <laughs> what mother does that crap? I. I know, I know, I don't know, I, I don't know. And, you know, one of the things here with that I know came into question with Kai's trial, kind of going back where it would make sense that Kai was, he wouldn't act if not provoked, referencing that comment. So he more than once spent time with Joseph Gelfi Jr. So I think part of it is, you know, if you were assaulted, but then you went back. And I know that piece was being looked at. And there's a whole thing on that in regards to, you know, the credibility of Kai. There, there That was really looked I didn't want to get into a ton of that here. But if you are doing, you know, a little bit of information or more heavy research on this case, you're going to see that too and, and read that too. And that that's just a whole nother can of words in itself. But it's not that that would make what Kai did was okay. It's just interesting that there's, it's being called into question, you know, did this happen or if if it did, but you went back and that has a whole lay layer to it in itself. It's, this whole case is just such a sad case. It's such a sad, sad case. All right, you guys. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Sure didn't. All right, you guys. Well, thank you for joining me for another episode of Danny After Dark and covering the case of Kai McGilvery. This was a very interesting one. And thank you to Doug for providing all of the links that you did and just giving a little bit more of an understanding where people can learn more about Kai and learn more about you breaking down the area of Canada that that this references so that people have a little bit more context for the case. So thank you everybody for joining me again. I will see you guys later this week for a true crime and chill. If you have any other questions or comments on the case, um, once this video stays up, just make sure to leave them in the comments. And until next time, remember, we don't live in darkness. Darkness lives in us. Bye everyone.